Hey everyone, John Reed here, host of Learn to Stargaze and author of the Things to See with the Telescope series. So every year I do a video around Father's Day for the folks out there looking to get the fathers in their lives something special related to space or astronomy. So this year, here's what we're going to cover. Binoculars for stargazing. These will range in price from about $50 to $150. Telescopes, knowing that most of the telescopes I'll talk about here are under $500. Telescope accessories, most of which will be under $100 and space books because I read a lot and I'm an author. This video is not directly sponsored, but it does contain a few affiliate links, which I'll call out in the video description. Note that I'll only link to products that I truly believe in. Recognizing that there are a lot of folks on tight budgets this year, I wanted to start off by talking about binoculars as a tool for stargazing. I think a lot of people truly underestimate just how amazing binoculars are for observing the night sky. Many of the night's best targets, such as the Andromeda Galaxy and the Pleiades, look far better in binoculars than they do through a telescope. That said, if your dad is asking specifically for a telescope this Father's Day, then he probably wants a telescope, so feel free to skip until the next section. There are three types of binoculars that I enjoy for stargazing. The first is a basic pair of 10x50s, and for these I'd budget around $50. Now I have an old pair that I need to replace, and when I do, I'm currently looking at these ones, the Bushnell PowerView 10x50s. For binoculars, the first number is the magnification, and the second number is the aperture, the diameter of the primary lens. So for the PowerView binoculars, the magnification is 10, and the aperture is 50. I found that 10x is a pretty good level of magnification for stargazing if you're just holding the binoculars freehand. When you get much higher, the image seems to bounce around. Aperture determines how much light the binoculars gather, as well as how detailed objects will appear. That's why 50 millimeters and higher are generally recommended for observing things in space. In any case, if you're picking up binoculars for stargazing, it's good to get what's called a monopod and a binocular adapter. To connect the adapter to the binoculars, the logo on the hinge of the binoculars pops off, and there's a place to screw in the binocular adapter. Then there are the 2X or Milky Way binoculars. I found these to be a lot of fun. Basically, they give you superhuman vision. They don't magnify the sky very much, but when you use them, so many more stars seem to pop into view, even from light-polluted skies. Then we have actual astronomy binoculars. The most popular version of these are in the Celestron Skymaster series. The most popular being the 15x70s or 25x70s. Both versions surprisingly seem only to cost around $100. I haven't personally owned these, but I've used my friend's pairs and I didn't have any issues with them. They seem great. The 15x versions are probably easier to use, but in any case, I definitely recommend using them on a tripod or at least a monopod with a binocular adapter. There are lots of other options for binoculars, but as you get fancier, like with zoom binoculars or image stabilizing binoculars, I feel like you might as well just invest in a telescope. Now let's talk about telescopes. Assuming your dad is a beginner, I have five rules for choosing a beginner telescope. Rule number one is that the telescope must have 100 millimeters or more of aperture. Yes, there are some good telescopes with less aperture, like the Skywatcher Evo Star or Evo Lux, but having a requirement of 100 millimeters of aperture eliminates a lot of the crap that's out there on the telescope market. Rule number two, the telescope should come with a red dot or bullseye finder, not a finder scope, or at least a universal dovetail adapter so that you can attach the finder of your choice. Rule number three, the telescope should come on an AZ or Dobsonian style mount, not an EQ mount. Altazimuth or AZ mounts are just so much easier to use, and I think they're just far more fun. Rule number four, the telescope should be free to move, but stay fixed in place when released. This eliminates telescopes on camera tripods or rod and yoke mounts. Struggling to point the telescope or struggling with a stabilizing rod are things that just suck the fun out of using a telescope. Finally, the telescope should simply be able to point straight up. And if it's a refractor, it should come with a 90 degree diagonal, not a 45 degree diagonal. You'd be surprised how many telescopes that are marketed to beginners simply can't point high in the sky. With these five rules in mind, here are my recommendations for 2024. And currently, these tend to run between about $200 and $500. I also frequently check the refurbished page of B&H Photos as I found some fantastic deals on there as well. The beginner telescopes that I recommend for those on a budget tend to fall into three categories. First, the 102 millimeter refractors, and second, the 130 millimeter Newtonians, and third, the six to eight inch Dobsonians. Note that none of these telescopes include computerized mounts, as a good computerized mount is typically purchased separate from the telescope. Let's talk about the 102 millimeter refractor for a second. 
There are a lot of 102 millimeter refractors on the market, and I've been fortunate to be able to try most of them. And most of these I've had pretty good luck with. The highest quality version I found was the Skywatcher Star Travel 102. However, this does break rule number five, as you'll need to buy a 90 degree diagonal separately. Oftentimes you may find that Costco carries a 102 millimeter refractor for around $200. Usually this will be the Omni 102, which I've covered extensively in this channel, or the Nat Geo 102, which I used in my last video. The Nat Geo version is actually made by Explore Scientific. Now Explore Scientific has a few versions of the 102 millimeter refractor, and they're all generally pretty good, except that the mount that some of them come on is the nano mount, which can be a bit lightweight and does not include slow motion controls. That said, I actually don't mind the nano mount. I have one and telescopes tend to be quite well balanced on it. Moving on, we need to talk about the StarSense series of telescopes by Celestron. I really like StarSense as a technology. StarSense connects your cell phone to the telescope via a special mount. It uses a mirror to direct light into your phone's camera to identify where the telescope is pointed in the sky, and then shows you with an arrow on the screen which way to point your telescope to get to your target. I have several telescopes with StarSense, and I've never had any issues. There is one common misconception though, and that's that you can use StarSense to take pictures of space. That's just not how it works. StarSense is there just to help you find targets, which you'll then observe through the eyepiece. Now I really like the DX versions of StarSense, and I believe I've used them all. The LT versions, however, I found to be lacking in optical quality, so the DX versions are definitely the way to go. There's even a 102 millimeter version called the Celestron StarSense Explorer DX102. For about the same price as the DX102, there is a Newtonian version at 130 millimeters. I've used several of these and they've been great, except you really need to check the collimation of the mirrors. Collimation is simply the process of aligning the mirrors. The easiest way to collimate a Newtonian telescope is with a collimation laser, which costs about $20. I'll post a link in the description for that. I personally have the DX5, which is a Smit Cassegrain design, which I really enjoy. There's also the Dobsonian series, which I got to test, and that was an absolute blast. Speaking of Dobsonians, to get the best views of deep space per dollar spent, you need to look at the Dobsonian style telescope. These days, the only version that seems to be under $500 is the six inch version but you can often find the eight inch version used for under $500 as well. I actually got my eight inch Dobsonian used for $200, but that was about five years ago. Now, if you're interested in astrophotography, but don't have a budget of several thousand dollars, new this year is the ZWO Seastar S50 for just 499 US dollars. I've had one for several months now, and it's been really fun to use. It was especially fun during the total solar eclipse because I could just set it up, set it to time-lapse and just leave it alone. Well, that's it for telescopes. Now let's talk about accessories. Here are a few astronomy gifts for dads for under $100. If you think of anything else that folks should know about, let us know in the comments. First, we have red light headlamps. These are very helpful to help you maintain your night vision and for reading astronomy guidebooks. There are several of these on Amazon and they're usually found for under $20. Next, we have zero gravity chairs. These are great for watching meteor showers or stargazing with binoculars. Here in Canada, we typically pick up zero gravity chairs at Canadian Tire. I've used them, I've never owned one, but people seem to really like them. So there you go. Now, if you wanna connect a cell phone to your telescope, check out the Celestron Next YZ. This is the only cell phone adapter that I've found works effectively. And for looking at the moon and planets, I actually really enjoy these zoom eyepieces. I have the Celestron version, but there's also one made by SV Boney that people seem to really enjoy. Another inexpensive astronomy accessory that I really enjoy is a USB dew heater for keeping the dew off my lenses. You can also use these for binoculars. And if you want an eyepiece upgrade that won't break the bank, there are 18 millimeter ultra flat field eyepieces for around $100. And I found that these offer really great views above and beyond the eyepieces that come with your telescope. Now for the books. A few years ago, I posted a video of my 10 favorite space books. But in this video, I'll just highlight a few that I think fathers who are interested in space might enjoy. The first is When the Heavens Went on Sale by Ashley Vance. This book is about the rise in new space companies within the last decade or so. The next book is Robert Curson's Rocketman, which tells the story of Apollo 8. Now, Apollo 8 was actually the first mission where astronauts traveled to the moon. Now, Apollo 8 didn't land on the moon, they just orbited it but it was a monumental mission nonetheless. During Apollo 8 is where the famous Earthrise photo was taken and you'll find that story here in this book. The next two books are fiction and these are the books by astronaut and test pilot Chris Hadfield. We have The Apollo Murders and the sequel The Defector. 
Both of these are really quite good. Now, in terms of astronomy books to get your father started with his new telescope, there's my book, 110 Things to See with a Telescope. However, this will actually be going off the market at the end of this month because it's transitioning to a new publisher, so you'll need to get it before June 30th, 2024. Otherwise, you'll need to wait until October when it will be back on the market. And then there's my favorite book to have written 50 Things to See on the Moon, which won the Simon Newcomb Award back in 2020. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped you choose a gift for your father this Father's Day. Subscribe to learn to stargaze to take your stargazing experience to the next level. And remember, the future is looking up. Ha, ha, ha.